Hello, it's Mark Matosh here from Markham 3D, and today we're going to be creating this tray for all my nozzles and for my 3D printer tools. This isn't how I designed it because I ran out of filament for this one, and the first time I tried to print it, I made a bit of a mess. Here we go. So let's start off by opening up Blender, and we're going to delete the default cube, Shift A, and we'll put that default cube back in. So from here, I'm going to go Tab to go into Edit Mode. From here, I'm going to press NumPad 7 to go into Top View tab into edit mode actually let's right click on the light and the camera and let's delete them because we don't need them go back here i'm going to press g to move and hold control to sort snaps to grip now at the moment this is one mil by one mil um let's move this up so it's on zero so g z one and i want this to be five millimeters high so if i press n and we click on the item tab we can see z is one meter which is five millimeter, which is one, uh, which is one millimeter in print. So we don't have to worry about scaling. I'm just going to go one mil is one meter. So I want five millimeters thick. Um, let's grab these and along the X axis, let's go 200 because I want this to be 200 by 200. And I'm going to select these and this will be 200. So if I go top down view, can see we've got this square now I want the walls to be a hundred uh, to be five mil so I'm going to do control R and we will make X because this is our X axis five mil and right click again uh, control R to put in edge loop again and this will be 195 and so now we've got this border let's do control R to put one in there um, Y can go five and 195 so now we've got a box but i want at least four slots actually i didn't think about that i could do five slots rather than making so many boxes let's do that so from here i'm going to do Control r and use the mouse wheel scroll up so that's three four five left click and then right click will recenter it from here i'm going to go into the edge loop um edge select Alt right click and shift alt right click on these. And I'm just going to kind of guesstimate these. Control B. What do we got? Does that actually give me any numbers whatsoever? Oh, there we go. Width down the bottom. So if I go 2.5, um, it came down here if you want to just go back a little bit. This is now five mil, which is exactly what we want. So from here, I'm going to do control R, add in edge loop. Um, let's go, let's just move it over a smidgen. Uh, about here, I'd say control B once again, and 2.5. So now we've got one mil, 8.8, 0.6, 0.4, 0 0.2 mil nozzles. And over there here is all our tools. So from here what we can do is let's select everything we want to extrude up so i want to extrude up all these faces this will probably be easier there we go oops and let's deselect these ones Make sure we've got nothing else selected, which we have plenty of. B, middle mouse button, and that'll deselect anything. Now, how high should we make this? So I'm just got my ruler out. 10 mil. I say, let's make this 30 mil high, especially just for the tool area. Maybe, ooh, you know what? Should we just go nuts and let's just make it 50 mil? Let's just make it. E to extrude and then press uh, five zero for 50 and that is our box now that's gonna be annoying to get these pieces out because putting our finger in and taking them out that is gonna be somewhat annoying now the question is are we gonna be moving this box around probably not so let's control Z that let's E to extrude 10 mil is 10 mil enough? 20 mil. <laughs> oh, control Z. Uh oh, and so 
that's a 20 mil hole. And then from here, I'm gonna C to use the selection tool again and use middle mouse to deselect all these. E to extrude 30. So now we've got 15, uh, 50 mil high walls for this section primarily, um, but we can get to these areas early, uh, quite easily from here. Let's go C and middle mouse button and deselect these. I'm gonna go E to extrude 10 mil. And what we're gonna do, see, so now maybe I should have made the walls a little bit thicker, but stuff it. I'm going to Alt R, or Control R to put an edge loop in. And we will set that at, so this is 50 mil. Well, sorry, this is 55 mil. So we've got five mil base plus 50. So now it's sitting at 60, which is what we've got here. Let's now select this area in here. If I just do that, yeah, let's do it that way. Um, so I did Alt right click to select the edge. Let's go C and start clearing some of these. There we go. And let's see if we can do something fancy. From here, let's extrude, scale X, and I'm just gonna make it small. Let's select just these back faces and go G, Y. Tricky. Um, let's see, top in, into top down view, Z, Y frame. Mm, it's two and a half mil. <laughs> I'm not that confident. Uh, but let's just do it anyway. <laughs> if worse comes to worse, I'll just snap them off. And let's delete these faces because they're gonna cause us a little bit of grief. What did I just delete? Uh, yeah, no, not that one. Delete face, delete face, yes, that one. And let's delete face. From here, I'm just going to select this area and just click face. Um, not the best um, geometry, but it's a 3D print, so that should be fine. And so what we've ultimately done is created a slot for a lid. Let's now add a little bit more pizzazz. I'm gonna do Shift A, add in text. And we're gonna to need to scale that up once quite a bit. So one point, oops, sorry, numpad 1.0. And I'm gonna put that here. And let's just put that in place. Shift D, Y. Let's put that in there. And this will be 0 0.8. Shift D, Y. 0 0.6. Shift D, Y. 0 0.4. Shift D, Y. 0 0.2. Oh yeah, that's looking snazzy. So if I select these and let's just move them up a little bit for now, I can go, at the moment, they're text. We need to convert that to a mesh. So if I go object, convert to mesh from curve meta surf text, bam. Control J to join. And now I'm gonna select these and I'm gonna E to extrude. Yeah, is that fine? That's fine. G, Z, and now let's put these in a decent place. G, Z. All right, so that is that is sitting five millimeters off the surface, which is quite a bit, which is exactly what I want. That seems like a lot. We don't need to go five mil. Um, G, Z, let's bring it back down. So I think sitting off two millimeters off the surface is pretty good and done. So we can now put all our nozzles in here and all our tools in this section. So I'm going to shift right click and select both of them and do a control J to join. I'm going to select everything. Let's flip the normals because the normals are always things that are stuffing us up. 
Um, actually, no, I'll leave it and I'll explain what normals are. So from here, I'm just gonna file, save as, and now we need to export this as an STL. So file, export, STL, and we'll call this nozzle tray .stl. Selection only, yes. Z up, yes. And export STL. So now let's jump over to Cura. So now we're in Cura. Let's open it up and select our, what do we call it? Nozzle tray, open. And that takes up the whole thing. Oh. And that's quite annoying that it doesn't actually fit. So I'm just gonna scale it in a little bit. So come over to scale and uniform scaling and we'll set it to 95%. There we go. So now we can see the red bits here. This is what I was talking about, the normals. So what's actually happening is Cura is trying to put supports on top of the model, but it's not the top of the model. But according to the model, it is the top. So kind of funny. So let's delete this cube, come back into Blender, select everything, Shift N to flip the normals. Let's save that and we'll do another file export STL and select it only beautiful. And let's go back into Cura, open it up and let's rescale that into 95%. And there we go. We've got a nice wonderful box. Um, now, I do have it set to a millimeter nozzle. I've never printed with a millimeter nozzle. Somewhat scary. Feel that I need to bump up the printer temperature. Um, let's put in supports because this section in here will probably need supports. So everywhere, uh, zigzag, that's fine. And so we'll come in and we'll rip that apart. Support density, 20%, that's fine. Build plate adhesion. We'll leave it as is. And I think that's good. What we will do is let's put enable ironing. And so what ironing will do is on the top surfaces, so for instance, in here, it'll make it nice and smooth. So I'm gonna leave it as a zigzag pattern. Let's go print this off. And there we have it. This is how it turned out. Not too bad. Obviously you can see that the corner started lifting up, so I probably needed to go a bit slow on the first layer, but other than that, it's all good.